Oh. Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, gorgeous winter day here in the end times in paradise in St. Simon's Island, Georgia. Good God, the planet eaters have come and gone on this beautiful Wednesday morning, January 24th, 2018. And uh, <laughs> after that little rude beginning to my day, uh, it is now time for me to step into my climate change meltdown roundup rant for the week here on uh, January 24th, 2018. So, uh, good God, I'm a, this is going to be a two-part rant. Had a lot on my plate today and leading off with uh, the number one bullshit the number one bullshit story of the of, of the week uh, for climate change and anything else many alert tribes members have sent me uh, this all sorts of coverage of this on the mainstream media science page this week I'm just gonna pick out the story from the French news service uh, to see uh, how they are spinning the story that they title worst case global warning scenarios not credible warning warning bullshit alert yes <clears throat> earth's surface will almost certainly not warm up any four or five degrees Celsius by 2100 according to a study released Wednesday which if if correct voids worst case UN climate change predictions yes this is a revised calculation of how greenhouse gases drive up our planet's temperatures Yes, and reduces the range of possible end-of-century outcomes by more than half. What they're saying here is they've shaved off the best-case scenarios they have also ruled out. Oh, shit, Sherlock. So they've ruled out the best-case scenarios off the bottom of the uh, of the line, but they have also ruled out the worst case scenarios. Bullshit detected. Take precaution. Okay, but uh, <clears throat> let's see. We got a few disclaimers. We have a few disclaimers here. Number one, uh, this is pretty much dependent on a few things here. Number one how effectively the world slashes its CO2 and methane emissions. Bullshit level, DEFCON 5. Uh, how about, and how we develop technologies to remove carbon dioxide from the air. Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's and improving energy efficiency will determine will determine whether climate change remains manageable warning, warning, bullshit alert. or unleashes a maelstrom of human misery. Oh shit, Sherlock. So uh <laughs> Anyway, then they break all of this unadulterated, uh, unadulterated horseshit down, saying again, if accurate, if accurate, this new way of predicting the future precludes the most destructive doomsday scenarios. But, if you get down to the bottom of the article, we will find out that the pressure 
The pressure is still on. No shit, Sherlock. And the findings should not be seen as taking pressure off the need to tackle climate change. There you go, as even a one and a half C increase will have consequences and a three and a half degree world which is still now their upper range, their bullshit upper range, could pull at the fabric of civilization. Oh shit, Sherlock. Yes. And then of course at the very bottom of the story where none of these goddamn climate change deniers will ever get to, we see a couple of other caveats to the story. <clears throat> Thank you, French News Service, for digging a little deeper. One wild card not taken into consideration by the new model is the possibility of rapid shifts in climate brought on by the planet itself. And this is lead author Peter Cox, I guess grudgingly admitting to the French News Service, quote, there is indeed evidence that the climate system can undergo abrupt changes or tipping points, close quote. And a few of these how about the collapse of the Gulf Stream as one tipping point? We have that pesky old thawing of carbon-rich permafrost as one of those pesky uh, little tipping points the new model did not take into account. And how about the melting of ice sheets on Greenland and Antarctica? Nowhere. Uh, taken into account in this new bullshit model. And any of these tipping points could change the equation. No shit, Sherlock. But as I say, you, you can rest assured that these goddamn climate change deniers are not reading uh, reading these little uh, exceptions, these little asterisks by this unadulterated horseshit study and all of this crap uh, about this is all dependent about uh, on how well we uh, how well we reduce our carbon, our CO2 and methane emissions uh, over the next few years. Yeah, right. Uh, 2017 already uh, being the highest CO2 levels in in history of humans and 2018 will be bigger than 2017 and 2019 and all of this shit about sucking this carbon dioxide out of the air. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Uh, but the climate change deniers are going to be having a field day with this. I can already imagine that little uh, lizard man, Lord Mockton, with his little eyes popping out of his head uh, on the Alex Jones channel this week talking about them climate alarmists. Uh, this, this, this is just the latest uh, example of, of how uh, you know, just, just giving weapons, a loaded gun, to these goddamn climate change deniers. Uh, so anyway, let's move on to, uh, to a, a little bit of reality here in the mainstream media. We're going to stay with the French News Service. Right next to that story in the French News Service is this story. Last three years, the hottest on record. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Uh, I've already been over this story. Uh, there, there's still some debate. Uh, it seems like, uh, as I predicted on January 1st, 2017, that the agreement seems to be 
that 2017 was actually the second hottest year uh, in history. But if you want to find the, because there was no El Nino, uh, if you want to find the three hottest years in history, you just go look at 2017, 2016, 2015, and just extrapolate out uh, over the rest of the century and make your own predictions about the worst case scenarios. All right, uh, Val, I'm going to send this one out to you. Uh, I think it's Val is always talking about how the mainstream media is never talking about global dimming. Uh, well, here you go. Thank you. The mainstream media has, has actually surprised me several times. This is, uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure who, the, from a outfit called Climate Wire. <clears throat> Cleaning up air pollution may strengthen global warming. Yes, this is talking about how the burning of coal uh, is actually all of the particulate matter that is killing uh, millions of people a, per year is actually working kind of like an on-the-ground geoengineering. That's exactly what uh, burning coal is doing with all of this particulate matter is, uh, is actually keeping the, uh, is dimming the sunlight, literally dimming the sunlight, and as we switch from coal to natural gas, we're going to be losing this global dimming from air pollution uh, caused by coal. This is just one of the two reasons that switching from coal to natural gas will in fact be worse for global uh, warming than, in, than if we just kept burning the goddamn coal. The other major reason is all of the leaking of natural gas, which is just another way of saying methane. Uh, all right, so take it away mainstream media, pollution in the atmosphere is having an unexpected consequence, as scientists say. It is helping to cool our climate, making some of the global warming, masking some of the global warming that has occurred so far. And that means efforts worldwide to clean up the air may in fact cause an increase in warming as well as other climate effects as man-made air pollution disappears. Yes, and uh, quoting this uh, study looking at this, how big of a threat is cleaning up air pollution to this bullshit Paris Climate Agreement. This is climate scientist Bjorn Samset. Quote, since we're trying to keep to a one and a half or two degree target, then this is something we will need to keep in mind. Okay, but I want to, uh, we're actually just going to go through five headlines. Y y you know, I guess it's time for me to eat some crow because I have been saying for years, for years as these goddamn clueless moron mad scientists roll out geoengineering, especially what we all collectively call chemtrails, spraying sulfur dioxide out of the backs of airplanes into our stratosphere, uh, that the mainstream media would be cheering this on. Well, actually, I, I am shocked to admit 
there, there must be 20 articles this week in the mainstream media blowing the whistle on, uh, on geoengineering, specifically solar radiation management. Here is how climate hacking could actually screw over life on Earth. If humans don't do something soon, climate change is going to be the harbinger of disasters that we've only glimpsed so far in movies. Terrible droughts, heat waves, floods fueled by sea level rise, that is the shit that will doom us all. <coughs> because humans are not doing such a great job at cutting the atmosphere CO2 levels, scientists <coughs> have begun to explore more radical solutions <coughs> like geoengineering Earth's natural systems through technology. But while a growing number of universities and institutions are exploring the potential of climate hacking to mitigate climate change and perhaps even reverse ongoing trends, other researchers are now warning that geoengineering may in fact be a Pandora's box we ought to keep closed. In a paper published Monday in Ecology and Evolution, a team of scientists explain that at least one form of geoengineering, which I choose to call chemtrails, has the potential to create a terrible ripple effect that if its use was ever halted, meaning if we tried it out, tried it out and then decided to quit, the severe global impact would be worse than if we had never employed it. And I'm just going to touch on several more mainstream media articles picking up on this research uh, in uh, this climate magazine. Here is if we start deliberately cooling the earth, we may not be able to stop as geoengineering is not a silver bullet. <clears throat> Blasting aerosols into the sky to reverse climate change seems like an exciting proposition, but it may be too dangerous to attempt because if we try and then suddenly halt this form of geoengineering, it could cause more damage than the climate change it is trying to fix. Here is dimming the sun to cool the earth could ravage wildlife. <clears throat> Geoengineering schemes designed to deflect some of the sun's planet warming rays would backfire if suddenly discontinued, wiping out species and entire ecosystems, a study published uh, Monday warns. Um, this is co-author Alan Robach from Rutgers University, quote, rapid warming after stopping geoengineering would be a huge threat to the natural environment and biodiversity. <clears throat> Half a century's war worth of warming could rebound in a handful of years, dooming many amphibians, mammals, corals, and plants to local or global extinction, according to the findings. So-called solar radiation management still untested, still untested, would inject 
billions of tiny particles into our upper atmosphere to bounce a bit of sunshine back into space. Okay, couple more. Uh, geoengineering could cause more harm than climate change. U.S. research finds policy and politics could turn a technological fix into a climate disaster. Oh, shit, Sherlock. And one more from EcoWatch. Geoengineering carries large risks for the natural world studies show. Anyway, I think we get it. Uh, guys, y y you know, I, I mean, a as I was talking about with Paul Beckwith in my recent interview, you know, Paul is a big uh, proponent uh, of, of solar radiation management. And, and his point, and I, and, and I can understand the logic that we're fucked if we don't do anything. But we're fucked. If we do, we're fucked, guys. It doesn't matter at this point. It's the frying pan or the fire. There is no way out of this trap. Pull your head out of your ass. Not that anybody listening to this uh, has their head up their ass anymore at this point. Okay, as long as we're talking about, uh, and, and of course all of this geoengineering stuff is, is also, you know, the, the biggest, the other biggest opponent uh, of geoengineering other than a few eco-Nazis are the climate change deniers who, who are, cla who are uh, against geoengineering fixing the climate because they say there's nothing wrong with the climate. And here we go again. Here is yet, this is Newsweek magazine giving Lord Mockton and the Alex Jones crowd uh, yet another loaded gun. Thank you, Newsweek, for, uh, for handing the, these fuckers uh, another bullet. Puzzling heat from deep inside the earth is melting Greenland's glaciers. Scientists already know that the Greenland ice sheet is melting, but the hidden heat source originating from deep inside the earth partially responsible for that melting has been a mystery. Now researchers have pinned down evidence of that heat revealing yet another force pushing glaciers into the ocean. And this is this one more no shit Sherlock uh, story of how if, if humans were not on the planet that the climate would keep changing due to all of these various natural cycles. But of course, the, these goddamn, from the first comment on, uh, it, it is these goddamn climate change deniers waving this research around that the melting of the Greenland ice sheet has nothing whatsoever to do with humans. I don't know, is there any eco-Nazi denying that natural forces at work on this planet both heat and cool the, the, the planet uh, without humans? If you are an eco-Nazi suffering uh, this myth, let me disabuse you uh, of your clueless uh, interpretation of the obvious facts. If humans had never been uh, inflicted on this planet, the climate would go through natural climate cycles. No shit, Sherlock. Fuck. 
What do we got here? Let's go from green from Newsweek in Greenland to Time magazine in Antarctica. The Great Crack Up. Thank you. Uh, Time magazine. It's hard to wreck a continent you can barely get your hands on. Human beings typically do our worst environmental damage in the places where we live and work. Clear-cutting forests, strip-mining mountains. Antarctica, however, was more or less out of reach. No more, as climate change has become our species' great destructive equalizer, leaving no part of the planet safe from the harm we do. And then, of course, they talk about, they go down there to Antarctica, you know, where we, uh, just reviewing March 2017, where the ice around the South Pole reached a record low, and this one trillion ton iceberg the size of Delaware calving off, uh, and the damage to the ice is being done not just from above as the planet's air warms, but from below as its oceans do too. And while the disappearance of Arctic sea ice is enough of an environmental calamity, it is the ice that covers Antarctica that is a bigger, real menace. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Thank you, Time Magazine, for pointing this out. And then, of course, uh, I anyone who understands that the best way to judge the future is to look at the past. And I've mentioned this story before, but I'm proud to see the Washington Post. The Washington Post uh, bringing up this story, uh, looking pretty much all over the, the planet. Uh, this is zeroing in on the coast of Ireland, but I was having this same rant from the coast of St. Croix a, a couple of years when I was down there. And what they're talking about is, in this case, they're looking at a 600 20 ton boulder, 620 ton boulder way up uh, on the beaches of Ireland, and the same can be saying, said for the Caribbean and everywhere. How the hell did this 620 ton boulder get there? <coughs> no shit, Sherlock. It came in on the waves. During, in the past, uh, th these humongous uh, global superstorms that make any goddamn little peanut category 5 hurricane, uh, y y y you know, look like a bad hair day. Uh, in my guess is down there in St. Croix, I would like to go back after Hurricane Maria and walk along the same beach as my guess Hurricane Maria with 165 mile an hour winds that uh, that category 5 storm that obliterated the St. Croix dog pound off the face of the planet probably washed up maybe some 20 or 30 pound rocks maybe 10 feet up the coast of St. Croix. I'm just guessing here. Well, if that's what a Category 5, 165 mile an hour hurricane can do, what the hell moved the 620 ton boulders 100 feet inland? Yes. Uh, no worst case scenarios in our future. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to cut this uh, cut this rant obviously into two rants. Uh, I'm gonna break it off here and we're going to pick back up with part two of this laundry list of, uh, of stories. We're gonna come back Thank you, Fiesta Cranberry, for uh, doing my job for me. But we'll just pick back up here in a minute. Uh, if you haven't heard enough to understand we are so fucked, I'm coming back with another 15 reasons. <clears throat> Bye, guys.